Hello, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin, the Medical Director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation. Today I'm bringing a very important topic, a new subject about exosomes. And in order to give you the background about the exosome, I would like to um, talk a bit about the clinical dilemma that we have about the question, how early do we find recurrent disease? And why is this question of recurrent disease so important? And in that context, I'll bring some video with the uh, uh, blessing of the life science technologies. They gave us permission to use their video to explain what is an exosome, which is another new tool in the area of liquid biopsy. So first of all, let me explain a very important point. Every patient gets a primary treatment whether it's surgery, radiation, cryosurgery, or even hormonal blockade, or even active surveillance. The primary disease uh, is being taken care of, and after a while, there is a period of time that most of the time may be silent, and the patient may feel like the disease is under control. And then on the other end in the timeline, you have a situation of advanced disease. That means when the cancer really raises its ugly head, and the patient uh, really starts suffering from the disease. In between, we do not know what's going on sometimes, and I would like to relate to a few very important points. The first is we try to relate to symptoms, and in the case of prostate cancer, we know very well we may have no symptoms. By the time we discover recurrent disease, by having symptoms, it may be way too late. So what are we relying on? We rely on change in PSA. But the problem with change in PSA, it's not always reliable. And many times the PSA may not change and the patient still may be in trouble. But there is a, really a variety of situations with the patient. A number of patients may have the same PSA dynamics and yet some of them will be into more trouble, some of them in less trouble. So, how do we know? Well, we have modern tools now to follow cancer under the group of imaging. I would say in the past, we used CAT scan and bone scan, but now we have new tools that are enabling us to find cancer in a very, very small amounts in the body. This kind of it pushes the line between detectable and undetectable to show detectable cancer where in the past you were believing that you are doing fine, but you're not doing fine. You are able to find it by having more refined imaging tests to tell us what's going on. One of the question is when to do imaging or not, we have another tool we could follow the patient in order to tell us how aggressive to be with our imaging or whether to start a treatment or not, and that's the issue of markers. And this is a very important issue of markers because the markers could tell us many times ahead of the time, ahead of time, what's going on, in spite of what the PSA is showing us. So now I come to the issue that this um, video blog is going to relate to. We know about a solid biopsy. And a solid biopsy is done at the time of diagnosis. A needle biopsy of the prostate is done. And then it could be done also when the disease already is progressing. We see it in lymph nodes or in the bone. Even then it's quite difficult. So we need to move from this model of the biopsy because the biopsy is rigid. It tells you at a certain point of time how the tumor is behaving, but it doesn't tell you how the tumor is behaving in other parts of the body or if you had the biopsy five years ago, what's happening now? So now we move to the concept, which is the focus of our video blog, and which I'm going today to fine tune and talk about the exosome. So let's talk about this concept of liquid biopsy. What does it mean, liquid biopsy? The liquid part of it has two meanings. One, we obtain cancer cells and information, otherwise, not only cells, from liquid. That could be from urine, PCA3, we know about it. That could be also from the blood. 
So since the tumor is not always accessible, you don't have access to biopsy it, but if you find tumor cells in the blood, that gives us a new opportunity, one, to look at the number of cells, and more than that, to do genomic profiling, genomic profiling of the what we find in the blood, in the serum, or in the urine. So we call it liquid biopsy. I would like to uh, define two things that are very important. We all talk now about circulating tumor cells. Circulating tumor cells, like the name implies, it what circulates in the blood, and we try to capture it. Some researchers are checking cancer in the bone marrow, but that's much more cumbersome and more difficult, and you have less information about that. But besides circulating tumor cells, we find out that we have a new type, a new source for genome profiling, and that's the tumor DNA. Free DNA from cells, normal cells, and free DNA from tumor cells is spilled into the circulation, and we could capture it. And now, really, I come not to the bottom, and not only on my list here, but to the bottom of our video blog, and we talk about exosome. What is exosome? Exosomes are packages of genetic information. Tumor cells secrete packages with genetic information. Normal cells secrete packages of genetic information. And guess what? Even the dendritic cell, which is one of the active immune type of cells, or T cells, they have packages of genetic information. And I think we have very nice videos on the topic and I would like to share it with you. So let's go now to the video explaining what is an exosome. And this is courtesy of Life Science Technologies. Let's go now and watch the video. In health and disease, our major goal is how do cells secrete molecules that influence other cells in a good way or a bad way. Exosomes collectively are a very powerful way and a new way of thinking how cells communicate long distance. So when we're talking about exosomes, we're talking about really, really, really small bubbles that are released from cells. It's much smaller than a bacterium, for example. And you know that they're only about 100 nanometers in size, which is about uh, one millionth of the size of a hair. Exosomes are blebs that are released from cells, and they end up outside of the cells and can be isolated from the liquid. It's been found in uh, all mammalian cells that have been looked at. One of the problems with exosomes is that they're very heterogeneous. There's a very different kinds of vesicles, and it's been difficult to come with a definition that encompasses all the different types of vesicles. If you want to kind of envision uh, what we're dealing with here, I guess maybe you should see Manhattan as one big organism with all these different cells. Every building is a cell, and then and then how do how do these all these these buildings how do they communicate with each other? And that's through these these small objects that are running around through these streets. When you look here from the 28th floor, you see all these taxis driving around, and, um, uh, but they're so small, you can hardly see them. And I guess when you, only when you go really downstairs, perhaps when you take a big microscope, and all of a sudden you see that the, a taxi is much more complex than just a yellow dot. Actually, there's a lot of, of things going on in there. Exosomes are supposed to be very powerful mediators. They carry all the signaling and the machinery necessary to go and change the behavior of a neighboring cell. There is genetic information in these vesicles, meaning that they're not just getting to these vesicles, but when these vesicles get taken up by other cells, that they have a biological activity. Our cells produce large numbers of different small RNAs. They're called microRNAs. And they regulate about half of all the genes expressed in our cells. Now, we did find RNA in the exosomes uh, probably around seven years ago. The major question in the field is, do cells communicate with other cells in the body by secreting exosomes carrying these microRNAs and then affect the metabolism in other cells? 
only five years ago, the principles of communication in the body were either hormones or immunology or neurology. And now we found another way of communicating and sending genetic signals between cells. So what's in the message? How, how can we decode, how we can crack the, 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 the communication code of, of cancer cells? The long-term view is to be able to actually to, to cure cancer. Exosomes and cells secreted by tumors are a critical part of the microenvironment. We think that cancer cells, they make vesicles and they customize them for their own purposes. Tumor is not anymore what we thought it was. They are very good in making their own language and then actually giving out signals that cannot be intercepted by our immune system. And that's what we're trying to do, decode this language that the cancer cells are using. In glioblastoma patients, you can actually get genetic information about the tumor by taking a serum sample instead of a brain uh, cancer biopsy. Exosomes can actually give you some information about the content of the cell, and that can tell you something about whether the cell is normal or headed towards being malignant or is fully malignant. Those types of biochemical markers could be incredibly valuable in detecting cancer at a stage where it's early and can be treated effectively. Just taking some blood is much easier than taking a biopsy. We have uh, developed the platform in three biofluids. So we're working in uh, urine samples as well as blood and cerebrospinal fluid. We're focused on developing diagnostic tools for prostate cancer, brain cancer, neurodegenerative disease and other solid tumors. A lot of patients are diagnosed with a certain disease they are treated all alike, but not all patients are similar. Maybe the exosomes, they can say something how the treatment uh, worked. Was it good? Uh, did it work efficiently or not? You can use exosomes potentially as therapeutics to directly target cancer cells and then kill the cancer cells without uh, killing the healthy cells. Currently, there is a program that's uh, being run in France to use exosomes from patients with cancer. Uh, so to purify the exosomes from their immune cells and to re-inject them into these patients with the hope to boost their immune responses against their own cancer. So you could load these uh, little vesicles with very specific targeted uh, molecules that only are damaging to the cancer and not to normal cells. Exosomes used this way would be uh, a sort of personalized therapy. We have hurdles to get there, but it's uh, an exciting opportunity to actually reach much further in those fields. This field is, of course, extremely exciting, has huge opportunities, but also many hurdles. In fact, the NIH, the American government, just decided to fund $130 million dollars for this type of research only just because they see the enormous potential it might have. The exosomes are really this, this way of communicating between cells. What we discovered was that they contain genetic material. So we can show in humans for the first time that maybe genetic information goes from one cell to another cell. They are now thought to be involved in all these type of functions that are necessary and are taking place all the time in your body. I think we have not found any cell type that does not release this type of vesicles. Exosomes are certainly going to be useful diagnostically. They can be very good markers of disease onset. You can use exosome for monitoring if your treatment is being successful or not. The long-term view is to be able to actually to, to cure cancer. Exosomes can potentially be used diagnostically in areas outside of cancer as well. And there's some early examples already where people are detecting uh, differences in certain RNA levels in diseases like diabetes, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, and many others. And it could be a very broad uh, diagnostic platform for all kinds of diseases. One cell can send a whole bunch of different molecules. They're taken up by the other cells 
and they're released inside of the other cell and they can really regulate the other cell at a totally different level than we only thought. If we know the mechanisms how these vesicles get out of the cells, we can also probably potentially block it. We can make therapeutics to block the secretion of these detrimental vesicles. Another idea is to imitate them and to make artificial exosomes. You can make custom-made exosomes to deliver drugs that would actually go and kill the target that is doing harm to the body. I've always wanted to understand how life works. I would say that my discovery that was the most satisfying was exosomes. Collaboration is absolutely essential to solve most difficult problems. The excitement that we see now in the field over this is shared by the governments, uh, it's shared by the scientists here. This will evolve, this will grow, and there will be many different possible uh, treatments with this approach.